Good morning, beautiful people, on this beautiful day we're having. Oh, it's warm. Actually, it's verging on hot. It's sunny. There's a gorgeous stiff breeze in the air. Oh, it's utterly perfect for some garden time. It's mostly peaceful too, but every now and again, someone over there is starting up with some kind of power tool. But we'll just have to ignore it, won't we? <laughs> there they go. Um, <clears throat> I'm sort of continuing on my theme of when I did the Lavender Harvest video that I'm feeling a little bit uh, just really, really run ragged recently. Crazy busy, crazy long days. So I want today, when I was thinking, oh, I just really, really do with the day off. No time for that at the moment. But I am going to treat today as if it's a day off. I'm going to have a holiday in the garden, if you like. So I'm gonna go nice and slowly. There's absolutely no pressure of getting anything done in particular. I do know what I want to do today, but it's gonna be one of those days where I'll just get as far as I get and I'll be happy with whatever I get done. Yay! So today is going to be mostly about having a bit of a tidy up. Now, I know there's probably a lot of people think, for heaven's sake, Vivi, your garden is tidy. <laughs> there may be a few people, a few negative Nellies out there who think, oh, why do you bother? Oh, you're so anally retentive about tidying your garden. You know, there's a number of reasons I, li I like to keep the garden tidy. <clears throat> First and foremost, that's just how I am. I can't, I can't change the kind of person I am. You know, I'm very sort of aesthetically, visually driven. And when the garden is tidy and looking good, it just pleases me, it pleases me to see it. And when I visit, the next time I visit, after my little tidying session today, when I arrive, I'll look and be, oh, it's so lovely. Um, but on a purely practical level too. I think it's very easy, I know I do it, that when I'm sort of standing on the end of one of my beds and kind of looking at the whole bed, you're sort of seeing that whole picture but not really the detail. So having a day like today, it'll be great because it gives me the chance to get up close and personal with each of my plants. It gives me a chance to check on their health. It gives me a chance to think, oh, do they need a feed of some description? Do they need a bit of help? Having a look for weeds, are they, are they crowding my plants out? I don't want the weeds to have all that beautiful nutrition that I've worked so hard to get into my soil. So, you know, the weeds can come out and stop crowding and stop nicking nutrition. It gives me a chance to look at the soil. You know, how, how dry is it? Do I need more mulch in certain areas? So yeah, it's just a really, I like to have a day like this, probably at least once a month, where I'm just, focus, I'll just focus literally on one plant at a time. It may be that I'm only with one plant for 30 seconds. I may give it a quick look over and think, yep, yeah, you're fine, move on to the next one. Obviously, I'll be looking very closely at the tomatoes after all the rain we've had. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's my um, it's my pleasure to have a neat and tidy garden because of how it looks to me. But like I say, on a practical level, it's really good to it's just good vegetable husbandry to get right in there with all your plants and and really keep. A close eye on them from time to time. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to, where am I going to start? I'll probably start with strimming and trimming. Now this is the other thing I always think with my grass paths. When I've strimmed and trimmed them, they're acting almost like a picture frame and the picture, the work of art, is my veggie beds. So I want a beautiful frame to set off my beautiful artwork. You know, I don't want a frame that distracts and detracts from the art. So yes, I'll be strimming and trimming. And then what I normally do, and I'll certainly be doing it today, 
is because we've had all this rain there's some quite lush grass growth where I've got all my trimmings I will pick them all up because then I can use them all as mulch so not only am I tidying but I'm going to create some mulch for one of my other beds one of the brassica beds speaking of which I've got a big thing to fish out and show you yeah so if you remember when I was planting the brassicas in the ex onion beds I was saying that even though the onions had had a really good mulch by way of um, well I've got an itchy nose and there's not a cat in sight strangely um, yeah they've had a good grass and leaf litter mulch but obviously some of that's broken down over the course of the summer so I want to get more mulch on there I've also noticed that one of my oh what was it one of my broccoli has been nibbled by something I didn't have enough nets for my final row of broccoli but now I have because look it's ginormous can you see it's so big I've got three new of these tunnels so I've got to say a massive thank you to Phil for these and also um, thank Kevin again because Kevin sent me two lengths of brand new gorgeous Enviromesh so I think I'm pretty much okay for nets now and this came off the back of that day when I was mentioning how I don't want to use big net anymore because I don't want to inadvertently trap a bird goodness so Phil organized these net tunnels for me so I've actually had them in the end from Chase Organics um, the organic gardening catalogue which is online and the fab thing was they're not cheap but the great thing was which is why I'm so grateful to Phil thank you because I would never have been able to afford them um, but the great thing is at the moment they've got a three for the price of two offer on so if you're after some nets or some tunnels go and check them out while they've got this offer on I was trying to do it online and when it came to the ordering it didn't include the free one and I thought hang on what's up with that so I actually did my order by phone um, and that that made it all fine I got my three for the price of two yay and this is great because at the moment where I've got my purple sprouting broccoli I've got my two tunnels which are actually shade netting two things of that one it's quite shallow so I need space for the plants to grow but also I don't want shade netting on them anymore I like to use the shade netting initially when I transplant because it's been quite hot and sunny when I transplanted them I just like to give them a bit of shade just while they're getting over the shock of being transplanted but now it's time for them to have some gorgeous sunshine so Phil and Kevin thank you both so much for my gorgeous brand spanking new netting yay and like I say I think now that's that's me good for netting brilliant right well seeing as my neighbour over there it's not a plot neighbour it's one of the houses I don't know what they're having done it seems like it's been going on forever though, doesn't it? All those times I've tried to do any filming in the orchard and it's like, nee, nee. but I think because they're making noise, I'm going to go make some noise too and get streaming. I just thought I'd have a quick catch up. Oh, hang on a minute, there's George. We'll have our quick catch up in a second. I just need to get some food for him. That's better. George has got his food now, he's happy. That's really winding me up. It sounds like it might be tree surgery. Is that going to go on all day? We're just going to have to get on with things. So what I wanted to say, <clears throat> just before I go and stream, is about my new streamer. So if you remember back in, <clears throat> I don't know when it was, I think it was about May. Which is about today. I'd had my previous streamer, which was a Mac Alistair for about gosh I think it's about five years so it had done really really well I mean that was one battery five years amazing but the battery was getting weaker and weaker it just wasn't filling up with charge properly each time so I hunted high and low tried to get another battery for it shut up <laughs> talking of batteries oh sorry George um, yeah, I hunted high and low for battery, couldn't find one, so I thought I'm just going to have to get a whole new um, 
open its streamer, which seems such a waste, doesn't it? So two things. One, with that old streamer, it's actually ended up with someone else who is using it for parts, which is great, so it's not ended up in landfill. And then I suddenly thought, ah, I've got this Ryobi battery, uh, and listen, I'm not promoting <laughs> at all. This is not me being given freebies and promoting them, not by any means. I've got this Ryobi battery because, if you remember a couple of years ago, for my birthday, Graham gave to me a power drill and power jigsaw. So I thought, well, I've already got the battery. Why don't I just, I'll, get, I'll go with this make. So initially I was looking for another McAllister, but then I thought, oh, I've got a battery already. Go with that. So that's what I've done. Having said that, this battery is now about, I think it's three years old now, and it's just starting to wear out a bit. But these batteries are still available, which means I can get a new battery, which is obviously going to work for my strimmer, my jigsaw, my power drill. Brilliant. So at the moment with this battery, I'm only getting about half the allotment done. Half the bed's done. I had a quick little session around the herb bed the other day, just because that grass had got so long and, and snarly underneath the lavender. But I'm going to start at the top of the pot, see how far I get, just see how far I get. But yeah, um, in terms of in terms of the using this one, there's all sorts of adjustments in terms of adjusting the the head angle. Oh, I shouldn't have picked it up. I think I frightened George away. Hey, buddy. I'm sorry, little pickle. Oh, oh he's coming back. Oh. Um, you can adjust the head for the angle. You can adjust the height of the of the actual sort of pole, as it were, which is really useful because. <clears throat> I'm not particularly tall at five foot ten, but it's one of my it's one of my big issues with any tools, anything in life really, trousers and tools, is finding things that are long enough so I'm not bent in an awkward position. So it's great that you can lengthen. Likewise, shorten it. I know some of my shorter friends get grumpy because that you know things are designed for people who are five foot seven. There we go. So length and short of it. And then the actual handle for holding this bit of the handle, that also adjusts. So you can get it really ergonomically suited to you, which is great. Um, this one is a thread, what do you call it? You know, like um, a string. Whereas my old one was, was little blades. I prefer that as well because that's much less, wa less waste than the blades were. Anyway. Great, just as I'm about to wrap this bit up and go and strim, the noise stops. It's the law of sod, isn't it? I'm off strimming. Leave George in peace to have his breakfast. It occurs to me that some of you may be on the lookout for a strimmer and would quite like to see this one in action. So I'm just going to show you a couple of seconds of it at work so you can see what kind of cut you get. Hopefully it will pick up. It's kind of funny light today because it's so bright up there. But of course I'm in the bean arches where it's beautifully shady still. Anyway, let's have a go and see if you can get an idea of how lovely this one is to use from a bit of me doing it. Well, I hope that's given you an idea of how of how well it works. You, hopefully you could see that this grass was really quite long and really lush, but it's coped with it absolutely 
perfectly um, and now you can see oh, so obviously I'm going to trim my edge but you can see all this litter I've left behind this is going to be great for mulching so I will carry on and finish all my strimming and then I can start trimming it's turning into a bit of a tool day isn't it <clears throat> on that note I am thinking about making a video probably after the autumn, probably after most of the harvesting is done and things are much, much quieter in the garden. I was going to do a video about all my tools, or my favourite tools, what I can't live without, what I can live without, etc. But I just wanted to quickly talk about my edging shears. So these are fairly new to me. My last pair uh, were dead cheap, really, really cheap. I bought them about four or five years ago. It's all I could afford at the time and it just goes to show you get what you pay for because they completely snapped sort of down here. Um, not weldable rubbish. So these are by Qualcast. I'm really pleased with them so far. The length of the handle it suits me perfectly. But what I really like are the, the cutting blades. It's really quite a thick, piece of metal that the blades have been made from which means that they should in theory they should be able to be sharpened year after year after year there's it basically there's enough metal there to keep taking a bit off every time I sharpen so yeah I'm I'm delighted with these I, I think the thing with all tools is ultimately you know, it, I, I don't think they're the sort of things you can buy online. I think they're the things you need to go to a shop, whether it's a garden centre, a DIY place, wherever it is, go, try to find a place with a big range and just handle everything and try to sort of replicate the actions of what you're going to use the tool for in the shop to see how it feels. And ultimately, you know, buy the most expensive you can well not necessarily the most expensive that's not necessarily always true but generally speaking if it's really really cheap it's not going to last and it's you know it's a waste of money it's better to spend 20 pounds and have something that lasts 20 years than spend 10 quid for something that lasts four or five years right enough chat on with the work, it's such a beautiful day. It's the absolute most perfect day for all of these kind of jobs. And finally, that blasted noise has stopped. Yay! This has got to be one of the most satisfying jobs in the garden. It's so quick and easy to do but it's like a gorgeous instant makeover I mean it's just it makes such a huge difference doesn't it let's come back the other way and enjoy the difference like I say it's so quick it'll probably take me oh, 20 minutes half an hour at most oh put the stone in there to do the whole garden and I can stand back and enjoy how it all looks again and as I mentioned earlier oh let me just grab my bucket which is behind you sorry excuse me not so much here because this has been in full sun it's not grown too much but as I get further in to the jungle of beans all this material masses of it fantastic mulch now you may you may be thinking why bother why not just leave it there as mulch but I think it's evident oh let me sit down so, yeah I think it's it's evident under the um, under the beans here, just how wonderfully moist everything stays because of all the shade from the beans. But also, if you remember when before I planted the beans, oh, let's sit down a sec. 
way back last winter, I dug trenches where all the beans were going to go and filled them with all sorts of garden rubbish, trimmings, bits of cardboard. So that's all been helping over the summer to act as a bit of moisture retention. So yeah, the beans, frankly, they don't need this stuff. It needs to go onto one of the beds that's <clears throat> considerably more exposed. And in this case, it's gonna be for the broccoli. <sighs> Carry on. <laughs> It's suddenly feeling really quite hot. Oh, it's gorgeous. I honestly thought we weren't going to have any more summer. <laughs> but this is great. So I'm just going to quickly replace the, um, the broccoli that I don't know what happened to it. It looks like it was eaten. So this isn't the same kind of broccoli. This is the sprouting one, or at least I think it's the sprouting one. So I just quickly pop that in there. Now, opla. I've been around, I've picked up all my grass trimmings to mulch this bed with, but there's pretty much no point in mulching bone dry ground. So I'm gonna go quick water. The water butt is beautifully full. It's amazing actually how really dry the garden is again considering well it's only a few days since we had lashings and lashings and lashings of rain but as I've been going around today I've been sort of sticking my finger in sticking the trowel in to see where things are at and obviously in the more shady parts we've got some moisture where I've got mulch or nets, some good moisture. Oh, I think I'll get another can. Excuse me a second. That's better. I've put a whole other can load on these. So this is all my pickings from the strimmings. Well, not so much the strimmings as the, uh, the trimmings from the edges of the paths. There won't be enough to do the whole of this bed, but it's a start. And actually, uh, the, the strimmer battery ran out again, as it always does. I am going to get a new battery. So I will have another strim. When I do that, I'll rake up all the clippings and uh, just carry on being mulch-tastic. Free mulch. <laughs> That makes me think of that song. Free mulch on the free mulch highway. Sorry, <laughs> however it goes. Right, let's get this net up. Let's have a little butcher's gloves off. It says, I've got to say, that's masses of packaging. Um, I think it's done up with Velcro at the top. Let's have a little look. Yeah. That's a lot of packaging, but I'm thinking, firstly I'll keep it, I'm sure I'll find a use for it, and if nothing else, to maybe store the nets in when they're not in use, keep them in good order. So it says, the ultimate barrier against carrot fly, cabbage white, root fly, flea beetle, and aphids. Eliminates the need for chemicals. Yay! It doesn't mention anything about eliminates pigeons from pecking the brassicas to smithereens. Conserves moisture for stable, healthy growth. The finest gauge mesh and it still allows water to pass too easily. So that, that's the other thing, isn't it? We think of, of using these nets as pest prevention. But as you've seen in my garden, Quite a lot of the time it's about it's about preventing moisture evaporation oh a load of tape on the ends hold on a second oh it's like taking the tape off your tennis racket handle oh that brings back memories oh 
you know what? I can't tell you how much I would love to play a game of tennis again. There's no way. There's no way with my knees. But oh, I would just love it. I would just love one day of just... I might see if a friend will accommodate this for me, just to hold my racket and hit the ball, not do any running around, but just have that sensation of hitting the ball, because I love it. <sighs> Digressing. Oh, right, that's all the strings for closing the ends up. Oh, it's weird, isn't it? It looks a bit... <laughs> it looks like it's been dyed with wee. <laughs> okay. So, it's supposed to, I think it's supposed to be three metres long. Let's have a look. I'll just pop it there for a second. Spread it out. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Perfect length for my bags. And in terms of height, oh, that's going to be great as well. What I'm going to have to do, whoopla, is just move the green one a little bit. Hmm, how am I going to do this? I think what I'm going to do is move the green one. I've got two more of these at home. I couldn't carry them today. I didn't have enough hands. Let me get the green one moved to a narrower. Put this over two rows and then I'll, I'll show you how it's all looking and standing at the end. And hopefully they'll have shot up again by then. <laughs> Can but hope. Gosh, I do feel rather... Um posh and spoiled have such beautiful new nets for the garden so this is one of the lengths of the Enviromesh that Kevin sent I've got another length but in the meantime I need to find some more of the blue plastic this is all old water piping so I'll find some more of those and that would be great for my shiny look at the difference between the, the piece that Kevin sent and that old bit that was believe it or not that was being thrown away by someone it's crazy isn't it so I said yeah I'll have that and then right next to it this gorgeous new tunnel from Phil let me show it to you a bit more closely I think in terms of height that will be that's going to be fine for now as the brassicas are developing I tend to only protect my brassicas till about November mostly I'm protecting them from the cabbage whites so I keep an eye on them and when it looks like their activity has well stopped I tend to take my nets off I don't tend to get too much damage from pigeons fortunately I don't quite know why but there we go so yeah that will I'm sure that will be sufficient um, during this stage of their growing and if not if if they're getting too big what I can always do is take this arrangement off here and move it over there because again I tend to after about November I'll tend to take all this off because the carrot flies and the alum leaf miner are no longer around oh I need to harvest some leeks actually so yeah I'm delighted with that and like I said I've got another two of these so they can go just over here where I've got the purple sprouting broccoli in I can swap these out because like I say it's not ideal to have the shade netting on anymore I've had a quick look under these they're all looking great and that little bit of mulch that I did get from the compost bin that's looking great too and then the only other bits of brassicas whoa, actually that wind is gorgeous it really is suddenly roasting hot oh look at those edges you see doesn't it make a difference yeah the only other brassicas this is my savoy cabbages and some odds and sods of sprouts brussels sprouts which reminds me i need to take over my spare sprouts over to catherine's pot and put them in her tunnel for her oh do you know this morning has absolutely flown by it's scotchy warm but I'm glad with the little jobs I have managed to get done today. Oh, that's such a happy sight. <laughs> I'm so giddy about it. It's because I rarely have anything shiny and new. So, oh, that's making me really happy. But I think I need to get into the shade for a minute because, wow, yes, it's very warm. Wow, well, you can probably tell by the pinkness and the moistness of my cheeks, just how hot it's got today. Um, 
yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be quite so warm. Sorry, I'm just having a scratch with my pen. Um, it's been an absolutely wonderful morning. <laughs> I was saying the other day that I'm not ready to let summer go yet. And this, today, I just feel like it's a blessing, an absolute blessing. And sort of having that frame of mind of, right, today is a holiday. You know, it's the kind of, it's a working holiday. Let's call it a working holiday. Yeah, having that attitude, I think really makes a difference on a day like today because I'm looking around and thinking, yeah, that needs doing. I'll do it in good time. I'll take my time over it. So this morning has absolutely flown by. It's already half past one. My tummy's rumbling, I need to eat. So I think for now, I'm gonna wrap things up here with you. I'm actually going to carry on. Well, apart from anything, I need to water quite a few parts of the plot, but I'll, I'll do that much later this afternoon. But I've got a really nice little plan for myself for this afternoon, which I'll show you in the next video, which is going to include some harvesting. It's going to include... I'm going to show you the loofah. And it's going to include me preparing a little meal for myself in the shed. <sighs> been so waiting for this moment so that'll be in the next video for now I'm just gonna have 10 minutes here in the shade of the shed drink a litre of water might close my eyes for a few minutes oh yeah a little snooze and then carry on later so I hope you're still getting some beautiful summer days too and I really really hope that you're able and free to make the most of them Declare a holiday day for yourself. <laughs> Have a holiday and get sweaty. Yay, why not? Oh, bliss. Absolute bliss. Okay, I will see you all again really soon. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Of course, take care of yourselves. Get out and enjoy some sunshine if you can. Cheerio.